Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the business model of Dota 2. I'm especially interested in a couple of aspects that I think are quite unappreciated. Crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. So let's take a look at why I believe that these aspects of the business model are the secret source of Dota 2's success. First, take a look at the RPU, ARPU numbers of the MOBA genre. So the average revenue per user, average revenue that a company is pulling in per month per each user, active user that they have. And Super Data Research got some numbers last year in 2014, and they came up with the figures that Dota 2 actually has the highest ARPU of any title in the MOBA genre. Of course, League of Legends is still pulling a lot more money because it has a lot more players, but in ARPU figures, Dota 2 is the leader. One could argue that these figures are not very good at all, because when exam for example, World of Tanks was an RP of around four and a half dollars. But on the other hand, World of Tanks has a much more mature player base. They are older, so they have more disposable income. But when you compare the RP figures within the same genre and with the same type of players, then you get to see that, okay, actually Dota 2 is doing rather well within this group that it should be compared to. And why is this the case? I mean, Dota 2 is even giving everything gameplay related to all the players for free. All the heroes are unlocked, you don't have to buy any rune pages, you don't have to buy any heroes, none of that stuff. Even League of Legends, okay, you can theoretically open all the heroes by grinding the game. But in practice, if you have more money than time, then you will buy some of the heroes. So, but in Dota 2 there is none of that. All the things that you can buy are purely cosmetic. So one explanation that has been offered is that, okay, Dota 2 is maybe a bit more difficult, so maybe it's for a bit more hardcore audience. While this explanation may have some merit, the genre in general is very time-consuming. Even playing League of Legends is very time-consuming. So it's not really that much more hardcore if you compare League of Legends to a Candy Crush. Okay, there's already quite a difference, so everyone who's really playing League of Legends is already using quite a lot of time for that. But there is one crucial difference, and that's crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. So what Dota 2 does on crowdfunding, it's crowdfunding tournaments and it's crowdfunding teams. So there are these thing, cosmetic things in the game that you can buy, and a portion of the purchase price is going to go over to a specific tournament or a specific team. And actually, in the past two years, more than $32 million of the Dota 2 tournament prize pools have been contributed by the crowd, whereas only $8 million has been provided by the organizers. So that's a very significant amount. As an example, the latest and greatest Dota 2 tournament, the International 5, the Compedium sales were over $67 million, and 25% of that went to the tournament prize pool. Also, professional teams have an option to provide their own cosmetic items like HUD bundles or such to the, to the store and get a portion of the money that is being paid out for those. Is this really something that works? Maybe it only works because of the scale of Dirt 2? Well, Smite, another competitor in the MOBA genre, happened to copy this model. And to its World Championship prize pool in 2014, Smite was able to crowdfund $2 million. So crowdfunding made Smite World Championships 2014 the third largest esports tournament of 2014. And Smite is quite a minor title, so obviously there is something to it. Another aspect is crowdsourcing. So anyone can contribute items, propose them to Valve for inclusion into the Dota 2 shop. And if Valve approves them and integrates them into the game, then the creators of these items get a portion or share of the profits generated by this item. There are actually people who are making a living just making cosmetic items for Dota 2, getting them approved to the shop and getting a portion of the money. 
And what is in it for Valve? Well, this business model enables Valve to include much more items. They would never have the resources to create such a number and variety of items to their in-game store that they have when they crowdsource some of them. And when they crowdsource these and there are cosmetic items, so you buy a cosmetic item because you like the way it looks. So having a huge variety on offer is a great thing. Because then people find things that they are attracted to a lot more and that results in more sales. To sum this up, the secret sauce of Dota 2. First, there's the crowdfunding. When you attach crowdfunding into, into these cosmetic items that you buy, okay, you, so you buy this and 25% will go to the team or 25% will go to, go to this tournament, then you give a sense of purpose into buying those items. So the purchaser is no longer just buying buying this cosmetic item because he likes it, but he's also buying it to support a cause that he cares about. So this will increase sales because of the generated interest and purpose. And when it comes to crowdsourcing, it explodes the amount of resources available for the company. There are so many, so many more items that they can create, so many more items that they can put up for sale, and thus get more sales. When you combine these two, you combine crowdfunding and you combine crowdsourcing, you get a very different take on monetization. One that doesn't rely on people buying things because they're stuck in the game. They have to unlock things to proceed in the game. But instead, they buy things because they like those things and because they like the things that those items represent. So by turning the whole monetization upside down, not forcing people to buy something to get rid of the pain, but to make people buy something and become more happy about that, Dota 2 has actually been able to generate the highest RPU figures in the entire MOBA genre. That's something to think about. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.